Hello everyone. Uh, so we have uh, Anish Gokhale with us, an author, a writer, someone who is very evidently visible whenever you look about Indian history or someone who writes about Indian history in these days. Um, so welcome Anish to the live session Thanks, today. Uh, just wanted to check if the live video is right. Uh, are we audible? Uh, I would like someone to respond to this. Yes, this will be this. So the live video will be available as a recording as well, and uh, this will be available in the public events and talks page. Huh. Start coming up first. It will show in the notifications of people and then. Yes. <laughs> Just wait for confirmation of the audibility of the. Check it for my workplace account that I hope it fits audible. You sure? Yeah. <laughs> How do we start? Uh, I suppose we have to. Team Rat question. Say something. Yes. It's audible, right? Yes. I think so. Yeah. So, uh, I think a bit of a lag in the. Yes, there will be. There yeah. will be around a yeah. half a minute of lag. So, Anish, I will begin with the most obvious question over here. So, uh, I think so should we restart the whole thing? Or four minutes already. Uh, there won't be an issue. Let's begin. We'll just cut the video from the, in, when it's finally there. Okay, sure. Sure. Yes. So, Anish, uh, we will directly start from the very obvious question. You are a merchant Navy officer and then uh, you are into writing as well. Right. So how did this start happening and when did you start in venturing into the writing space and how did you went on to become two, author of two successful books? Uh, I always like to read books. Uh, reading has always been a hobby with me, a passion with me. I write since a very, very young age. And uh, in fact, since I was in school, fourth standard, fifth standard, I actually read quite a lot and I dabbled a bit in writing small small stories also when in school. Not very impressive, maybe about 500 words at most, but a bit of it was there. But mainly because of uh, the habit of reading, I could really uh, writing also. Yeah. When it comes to history, I'll, I've done a lot of trekking and hiking. Mm -hmm. In Maharashtra, there are forts there. And this uh, trekking and hiking again sparked my interest in Maratha history. Mm -hmm. 
so from there i initially started writing blogs hmm. tracking blogs okay. and at one point i thought about writing an alternate history okay sort of uh, what if so and so even had what if the battle of panipat had not happened so how would have history panned out okay. you know a fantasy story but then when i researched more on this topic i found that there are not too many people who know about what is actually transpired right in those years mm-hmm. apart from panipat the people uh, you know have conquered all the way to atok and marathas mm-hmm. conquered lahore and all this mm-hmm. so from this bit to a germ of an idea i essentially i just started uh, writing the first book so i was about 18 or 19 i started writing my first book that was uh, sayadri shundugosh and finally about 3 4 years later i could get it published so that's how my first book came about and uh, yes there are of uh, the fun product but the whole approach to the book mm-hmm. so well, it was a good thing that the book got finally published right because starting to write and seeing the finished product is a big journey in between right yeah there are things to fall in place more importantly people reposed faith in my writing mm-hmm. uh, liked it so that uh, motivated me and uh, i could go on to write my second book that is on the book okay. named uh, brahma gotra so in the second book i will um, you know not make or mistakes as such but improve on the first book and uh, with by the time i was 27 i had two books written right so and these two things on historical topics automatically it also gave me a lot of uh, new avenues opened in you know newspapers magazines and right. blogs and such where i could also write articles for them. And so yeah so past of what, five years because first book came out in 2012 mm-hmm. so five years been pretty good as far as writing has been concerned right so the first book took three years and that's a long time so in the when you started venturing in the space did you consult a lot of people some seniors some writers already or did you start on your own and always writing the first chapter or writing the first paragraph of an article is the toughest that's what i feel personally when i never i write so how did you begin that journey and what kind of researches were required what kind of travels were required and whom all were you able to consult um the first book actually was about um, maratha also and amit chabdali also and uh, it was in a historical novel form where yes i read a lot about twenty books i read about uh, historical events but i also got to focus on the flow of the story and since you are talking about a novel perspective mm-hmm. you know since i'm going to be set in a certain environment so mm-hmm. then not only the historical perspective but also whether the correct environment was being portrayed mm-hmm. if somebody is reading that book he should feel he is reading about 17th century maharashtra okay. yeah okay. so uh, my own trekking traveling within maharashtra within india helped mm-hmm. because i could then very easily visualize the war scenarios yes those scenarios because when it says that something is happening in satara i know exactly where it is happening right right you have been there mm-hmm. or when uh, the history book mentions that so and so person history book mentions that uh, so and so person uh, went from say kolhapur to nashik or from nashik to delhi since i have traveled these places i knew exactly what is happening right yeah i also talked to a couple of people regarding the events mm-hmm. uh my problem was with regards to abdali because all uh, most of his life story his politics happens in what is today is uh, pakistan and afghanistan right. yeah so obviously traveling there was out of the question mm-hmm. particularly in the region where the war is currently going on right yeah so i did the next best thing i talked to people from those parts okay. yeah so social media helped a lot in this case <laughs> and uh, yeah there were a bunch of because uh, there were uh, couple of them pakistani one of afghan but uh, they were very polite and helping in this regard because uh, essentially we are talking about what is the uh, like most of it but 
I also want to talk about cultural aspect and the whole environment and the society aspect also of those um, Afghans of the time. Because when person reading about Abdali, he should feel he is in Kandahar or he is in Kabul. Right. Yeah. So we have a general idea about Kabul Kandahar is right. And so when the book is being read, we shouldn't feel like continuation of Maharashtra going up. Right. Yeah. Uh, also put in few first words into the book to really you know, make it interesting in that sense. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, so those who have more got a big help. And uh, so all this helped to making a uh, you know it is um what people have liked most about the book is that when you read you really feel like you are in that part of the country. Hmm. Yeah. So that is something I managed to do. And yeah, the research obviously about 25, 30 books I read, okay. places I had visited. Okay. Yeah. So all put together I go to right. yeah. yes. But your second book is not about the place where you belong to. It's about a very far off place yeah. from where you have been. And the whole raising up is not happened in that culture. The whole uh, growing up and visiting those places as a child, as a young person, has not happened. So how did that go? And probably yeah. writing for something which you have not personally experienced, and that is not imbibed in your textbooks, not imbibed in your family folklore. Right. Right. So how did that happen? And probably how did you get a motivation to write something, someone who is very far from your native place? Yeah. The second book uh, is named the Brahma Bhutra. Right. It's a book on uh, Lachit Barpukan. Was um, Assamese contemporary of mm-hmm. Chhatrapati Shivaji, and he fought against the Mughals mm-hmm. around this time uh, in the 1660s, mm-hmm. 1660s, 1670, right. and uh, was able to defeat them. And Lachit Barfukan essentially is a huge hero in Assam. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so many statues and schools and hospitals and roads, everything over Lachit Barfukan. Similar to what we have in yeah, Mumbai yeah. and Pune and yeah. Maharashtra, everything is Chhatrapati Shivaji. <laughs> so, yeah, but uh, of course, I also didn't know about this person. Right. Till the time I chanced upon, by fluke, on Amar Chitra Katha, on uh, Lashid Barfukan, okay. was about uh, in 8th or 9th. So, I found it very interesting um, persona. Mm-hmm. One, because he defeated the Mughals in Assam. Right. And second, because a lot of names which are very familiar to um, Indian uh, Maharashtrian audiences. Mm-hmm. Uh, Dilir Khan, uh, Ram Singh, Aurangzeb, Chaturvati Shivaji. Um, these in Assamese, uh, this, uh, this part of Assamese history. So, this curiosity was there to find out more about it. And once I finished writing my first book, I was looking for a decided that I will research more on Najib Bhakkukan because it is a topic that is completely unique. But at the same time, there are little, it is not a topic that is totally divided from the rest of Indian history. Right. Yeah, it is um, not the history of a part of India which has nothing to do with any other part. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yeah. Uh, because of this Mughals and other uh, people, it is in some way connected to Maharashtra history, Chhatrapati mm-hmm. Shivaji, and this is uh, what I put on the cover also. It is not about comparison. But uh, just to entice the interest that uh, this is part of Indian history which is connected to the rest of medieval India also. Right. Yeah. So then I started researching mm-hmm. for this also. Uh, books, whatever I could get online, I found very few of them. Mm-hmm. Then I went to Guwahati, I stayed about 5 6 days. Okay. Yeah. Staying about 5 6 days, I went there specifically only for this book. Okay. Yeah. So in the in those five days, I went to only those places to which Lachit Barfukan associated. Okay. Yeah, to the river bank where the battles were fought, mm-hmm. uh, to all those hills, to the various places within the city. I stayed there five six days. One very big help was that I could find books talking about Lachit Barfukan and medieval Assamese history when I roamed around in Guwahati, in the old city area. Hmm. Yeah, so I 
to actually go to individual shops, ask for books, used to put the pile in front of me, and I used to say, okay, fine, I want these three, four. Okay. Yeah, so that was a really nice experience. One very good thing is that all these events mm-hmm. of Lachit Bhakugan's life, all the important events, uh, especially these battles with the Mughals, they all happen around what is today's Guwahati. Mm-hmm. So that is a very good thing. I didn't have to travel out of the city. Because okay. it is a bit dicey, especially at that time, uh, there were some elections around the corner. So, okay. yeah, so it was a bit di- dicey, you know, do long distance traveling. Mm-hmm. But I didn't have to do that since most of the places were in Guwahati. And once you go there, actually, you can appreciate because sitting here and reading battle was fought on the river, you start thinking, how can a battle be fought on the river? I mean, right. How many boats can you fit? One, two, three, maybe five, ten, fifteen. <laughs> But when you go to Guwahati and you actually see that river called Brahmaputra was there. Right. At its narrowest point at the city, it is a mile across. Okay. Uh, it is a huge place. You can actually then figure out, yes, this, this is a place where battles can be fought. Hmm. And uh, when you go to a place, I went there, I saw the places, I could again visualize it much better when I was then describing all these places in my book. Hmm. Since I had been there, hmm. I could put it on paper much easier. Right. Because it's a different uh, thing to read that our river narrowed down at this point, yeah. and still the battle was fought mm-hmm. at the narrowed down point. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So we have to understand that the at its widest, it's really very wide. Mm-hmm. It has uh, one of the world's largest river islands at uh, further uh, to the northeast, mm-hmm. the same river, and it really narrows down at Guwahati. Mm-hmm. But still, we have a battle being fought. So this whole terrain, I could uh, visit, I could see, and I could uh, then visualize it really. Well, in my book, I wrote it down. Okay. And uh, books, of course, uh, I got from there which I could read for the historical events. Okay. Secondly, what I had really concentrated on is not to repeat uh, the negative points or the drawbacks of the first book. Okay. So the approach was a bit different this mm-hmm. time. First book, what happened that uh, I must um, agree that the approach was a bit cavalier. Okay. Is, uh-huh. Because what I had done was I started writing and I just Put out a fuzzy aim at the end, and it's going to end over here. Okay. But I have not thought out the whole journey. Okay. So what happened was that I used to write, and then I used to wait about how we're going to uh, channel it into the next part of the story. Mm-hmm. We shall have a break for about 15 20 days, and uh, so it couple of parts took a bit more time to you know string together all this. Mm-hmm. Yeah. In fact, at one point. I chopped away four or five chapters because just not going the way I wanted. Okay. I put away four or five chapters, I again wrote it and included new chapters into it. Mm-hmm. Uh, second book, my approach was far better. First thing I did was write this synopsis. Okay. Uh, so if my book is going to be this way, it's going to start here, it's going to end here, and I'm going to follow this flow. Okay. Yeah. I'm going to concentrate on particularly this area only, on this person only, not uh, you know, make it to elaborate. Right. Because then it's going to have a much more longer length. Mm-hmm. Going to have only this much personality, and the whole uh, idea was about, you know, making a story that really flowed properly. Mm-hmm. And at the same time, also put in those subtle uh, references to Maharashtra here and there. So you'll find a few chapters there that are about Chhatrapati Shivaji. And uh, when you read the book Brahmaputra, you'll find mm-hmm. as to how these events of uh, Shivaji's life are linked to the mm-hmm. Shivaji. Mm-hmm. And uh, in Nachit Bhagavan time, it was known in Assam that there is a Chhatrapati Shivaji in mm-hmm. Maharashtra. Yeah. So, that is a historical fact that is recorded. That uh, the king of Kuch Bihar actually sent a letter to the king of Assam that there is a person named Shivaji fighting the Mughals. And various uh, small facts are given. But uh, the whole thing is that Shivaji was known. Uh, this I put in there, a couple of other facets of his life. Mm-hmm. And again, the whole story is about how the Assamese managed to struggle and uh, rise against the Mughals. Mm-hmm. What are uh, their uh, motive? Uh, what is their motivation? How does Lachit Barfukan manage to be advised? Lachit Barfukan uh, such a big hero in Assam. Mm-hmm. So, all these uh, points I have tried to put together in a, again, a historical novel form, but it uh, stays true to history mm-hmm. throughout. Apart from dramatization, in both my books, mm-hmm. I only dramatized the events. Mm-hmm. Right? Instead of saying he went from point A to point B, I put a bit of drama in there. I said he was on a horse and he was in hot weather and was right. But the fact remains that he went from A to B. Right. Yeah. And the middle part is 
bit of uh, drama potent so as to make it more uh, reader friendly. Also to make the imagination more. Uh, yeah. Same thing I talk about Brahmaputra. Brahmaputra again doesn't divert anywhere in historical fact. Mm -hmm. All those events happened. But I have again dramatized it to make it more, you know, interesting and uh, reader friendly as a good dry facts. Like for example, there is an actual event where the Mughal commander is shot and killed mm -hmm. on the river. He's in the river, he's in the mm -hmm. boat and he gets shot and he gets killed. So why do you put Swansha commander got shot and killed? Yes, I have um, put it into a drama form. He personally shooting, he has to escape. He then dives into the water. Mm -hmm. He dives into the water, then this, he hears a splash, so he's sure that he's, okay. he got his skill. And so this kind of thing I've put in there, yeah. uh, to bring out emotion, because what I believe in is that the personality of mm -hmm. that, you know, of Lachit Barfukan or of the Marathas we're talking about, okay. the personality should come out in mm -hmm. your writing book. Mm -hmm. And this is one thing that a normal or uh, dry history book may not be able to do, right. is to correctly portray the personality of a person. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because uh, when you just say a person was kind, generous, if people are going to forget being kind, generous, and you know, all this kind of thing. Yeah. But when you put it into uh, this kind of a story form that uh, he, you know, uh, gave a lot of arms or something from one of his what is actually history happened. So a uh, lot of anecdotes really show Lachit Bhagavan's personality. These also I have included actual historical anecdotes. So yes, Lachit Bhagavan's it was a much better effort, I would say, you know, Putra, and I'm really glad it has been received well. Right. Uh, I had one apprehension when I started writing the book that we going to read it. Right. Yeah, because this is a topic on Assam. I'm in Maharashtra, so one thing I have, so I just, I have to one is going to get interested. Hmm. It's going to get people interested in Assam, and maybe even when I include the name of Chhatrapati Shivaji, some people in Maharashtra will buy it. Hmm. But I'm very pleasantly surprised to see that there is hardly any state, I think about 29 states. I can vouch for the fact that at least 24 states, there are people who have purchased yeah, that book. Yeah. It has got popular in places I don't expect it to get popular. Mm -hmm. Popular in at least a sizable number of people are buying it. Right. From Tamil Nadu, Karnataka, Pradesh. South India, I don't expect it to really interest mm -hmm. too many people. Right. Yeah, but in percentage terms, yes, there are quite a few buyers from Bangalore and Chennai also. So it's been a very good journey. I'm very really glad that um, people have liked it and hopefully I can continue with it. Right. So one, in, uh, some, uh, that one thing I know for sure is a lot of people, at least in the VIF alumni network, are willing to write books on leaders that have been either missed or forgotten by the way Indian history has been narrated. People like Bursa Munda, people like uh, Tilak have not gotten the rightful place in the history. In the history. And I know people who will to, wish, wish to write a book on their lives and their journeys and their impact in the whole, the way we see our nation today. Yeah. So, what would be your suggestion in some crisp points? How can we begin? What would be the journey? What could be the possible milestones? And probably what would be the challenges they would face and how to uh, go around them? Yeah. Uh, first thing obviously is you have to see what the topic is. Right. What is to your liking. Mm -hmm. I mean, you have to like a topic. I mean, you can't just take a topic because it has to be done. Right. Yeah. Right. Some people may not like to write about uh, Some people may not like to write about Pilsa Munda for right. various reasons, first of all. So one, you should see what is really your liking. Because, mm -hmm. see, for my talking about myself, my interest in medieval history, mm -hmm. medieval Indian history. Right. I am not so much into ancient history or modern mm -hmm. Indian history. I can, I know, like, I'm, it's not like it totally goes over my head. Mm -hmm. But I won't uh, really be interested in giving a long talk about these parts because right. it's not uh, my personal liking. Right. Right. So that is the first thing. Mm -hmm. Secondly, person. You should see whether it's really accessible. That person, that personality is really accessible in the sense of are you in that part of the country? Can you go to that part of the country? That a part of the world if possible. Yeah. Uh, obviously, thing you consider is your time, funds. Uh, if you're going to really do a serious research, you need to spend time over there. Yeah. Are you going to have resources? Are you going to be able to devote that much time? <coughs> And um, are you going to be able to reach out to an audience? Mm -hmm. Yeah, because Birsa Munda is going to be a more popular personality and is a more popular personality in Bihar, Jharkhand area. Right. Yeah, so if you write something on Birsa Munda, you'll find a lot of Biharis and people in Jharkhand reading about it. Right. Yeah, people from other parts of the country will be interested. Mm -hmm. 
but there always will be your original preference for all these. Right. You can't. It's obvious. Obvious. Yeah. Because the culture. So, in the sense, if you're going to write about Birsa Munda, are you uh, going to be able to reach out to a Bihari audience? Mm-hmm. Yeah. In English, uh, Hindi, whatever. Mm-hmm. Are you going to be able to reach out to them? Are you going? To, if somebody says, uh, "We have organized a talk. We need you to come and talk about Birsa Munda." Mm-hmm. It's in Patna. Is it within your or their ability to bring you to Patna? Right. Okay. Yeah. So these kind of things you have to talk, uh, think about, mm-hmm. and um, once you've done that, obviously, one is you should everybody should talk about everybody. It can't be a regional thing, but you also give practical considerations. Right. <coughs> Or like class said about Lachit Bhavpu Gandhi, mm-hmm. so he's essentially a large hero in Assam, mm-hmm. but other parts of India don't know him. Right. So then you try and link something from India to the yeah, of like from. For example, I said uh, Chaturvedi Shivaji is contemporary. Right. A lot of people have said to me that um, we read the um, title. I have no idea who is Lachit Bhavpu Gandhi, mm-hmm. but then I uh, saw that uh, he is a contemporary of Chaturvedi Shivaji. Right. So uh, I was really interested in what is Assam and Shivaji doing on the same page. Right, right, right. Yeah, so that's so uh, that's why we have taken this, and now I find it very interesting. And I am really astonished to know that all these events took place in at the same time. I don't know, etc., etc. Right. So this kind of connect should be made. As to how Birsa Munda is then uh, connected to the rest of the freedom struggle, right. yeah, how is connected to the farmers' uh, rights and everything, or the tribal rights in uh, that part, and how that connects to the tribal rights elsewhere, right. yeah, and uh, what is his contribution hmm. to Bihari society or you know tribal society? Right. Yeah. So that's how we have to really connect it all and make it relevant on a national. Depending on what you go, you want to make it relevant on Bihari level, then you. Keep it over there. Right. Want to make it uh, relevant on a, a right. national right. scale, on a larger scale? It will really make uh, people identify with the topic. Right. Yeah. I always find that you put even one or two lines where people can really identify with something. Mm-hmm. They will go through the entire book. Hmm. Yeah. It happens also also in say movies. Right. You find, arey, this movie India dikha hai. You all go and buy watch that movie. There is nothing wrong. There is four frames in which India is shown. Right. What's a movie or a Hollywood movie? There's what some. Five huh. minutes scene was there. Less than that. Yeah, so still, four minutes uh, scene is there on India, and the whole crowd will go and see it. Right. Or you can take some actor who's going to act for ten minutes. <laughs> It'll be going. Right. But uh, why? Because we feel instantly connected. Connect with that topic. Hmm. One on a historical uh, fact basis, or on a more temporal basis. Ki by these are the values that are common to us. Hmm. Yeah. Or these values carry over the same values. Uh, Birsa Munda or um, local area people are also fighting. Right. So that's how um, Sir Rajiv Babu is fighting for same kind of values, Swaraj values that as uh, Chaturvedi Shivaji. Hmm. So, um, so that becomes an instant connect. Point. Yeah. Thirdly, I would say that uh, you should decide what the focus of the work is. Mm-hmm. What do you want to show at the end? Mm-hmm. Uh, if you take an a topic. Lokmanetyak. So, are you going to talk about Lokmanetyak's literary works? Mm. Where it written work, right? Right. Are you going to talk about his uh, revolutionary works? Are you going to talk about freedom struggle? Right. Yeah. Are you going to talk about his role as a you know, social reformer? Mm. Yeah. Are you going to talk about all of this? Mm. Is it possible to talk about all of this one book? Right. So you decide <laughs> on the focus, and then focus should be there throughout. Right. Yeah. At the end of the book, you feel yes. I mean, I know everything. I know quite a lot about what is contribution literature was, mm-hmm. yeah. And uh, so, fine. I, I would say that these are the things that should be. Right. So if I just summarize whatever we discussed just now, so you mean to say that we have to just first define that what aspect of that person we are going to write about, how to yeah. build their personality, then do some research on ground, going to the places where they have worked yeah. to understand what kind of surroundings were there, and then building a synopsis, and then one should start thinking about writing a book because this will give a framework. Yeah, so we have a framework in place uh, where you are sure of what the focus is. Mm-hmm. You are sure of what you are going to portray. Right. You are sure of the audience, right. and are you going to reach that audience? Right. Yeah. The you are going to have to mold your writing accordingly according to the target audience. Right. right. Yeah. And uh, so once all this is in mind, you can probably do it. Can I? You know, go ahead and write. Right. Yes. So more on the philosophical side now, Anish. So um, we say that. Authors really impact a large audience because even they cannot reach physically or their words cannot reach, but the books usually have that reach because they are transported from places to places, from hand to hand. So, what do you think 
is the responsibility and the duty. So there is a lot of free, there a lot of discussion also around that. Do does this form of art or writing or thoughts should they be bounded in some form of either freedom or in thoughts of in terms of do they have a responsibility to serve or are they free beings whom they can whom they should be given complete freedom on what they want to write and how they want to write. So what do you think is the responsibility of author in the whole uh, de- discourse of either nation building or creating a better world? <coughs> think. This is that uh, once you read in a book, mm-hmm. it is there in black and white, mm-hmm. it is in thousand copies. Mm-hmm. Okay. So if blog or something if I make a mistake, I can always email that fellow saying, Hey, you have to change it. Okay. And you have to type in mistakes. Okay. This paragraph actually is not supposed to be here. Right. Remove it. This video is being you know, recorded. Huh. Tomorrow, if I don't have any word, you can do it. What happens in writing is, or even with other uh, forms of you know, digital writing also, right. which you cannot change, mm-hmm. is that it is written word, it's in black and white, mm-hmm. and you cannot change it. Right. right? So you have to be 20 times more careful. I had 1000 copies. Right. So if I made a mistake somewhere, 1000 mm-hmm. people are going to read it, mm-hmm. and it's made a mistake here. 1000 mm-hmm. people are going to say, by Hazar, by Kilti, we have. So uh, you have to be obviously more, that is about uh, spelling mistakes or even uh, factual mistakes. Right. Yes, there are mistakes being made by big author also, right. and in fact uh, sometimes they are not mistakes but they are what is being written according to prevalent knowledge, right. which can change. Good authors have the magnanimity to uh, bring out a new edition where they put in the first few lines that so and so the errors because of the prevalent thing right. they have been corrected and they have been put in the book. Right. And, There are some authors who are too full of themselves and they keep publishing and printing the same thing. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, one is that you have responsibility that once you have written something, mm-hmm. you cannot take it back. Right. Yeah. Unless you individually go and argue with every person who is saying, <laughs> hey, yeah, because you are here. Freedom, yes, there should be obviously freedom. Mm-hmm. But at the same time, there is a bit of responsibility with the author mm-hmm. as to what he is writing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Whether it is going to reach the correct audience, hmm. is this uh, going to be, yes, we, you can't please everybody at the same time. Right. If you write a book that is going to aim at pleasing everybody, okay, I can't write a book that is going to be pro Marathi and pro Google at the same time. Okay. Yeah. Can't. It can't be. That is sure risk of failure. But then I think it is a responsibility on my part to see to it that I don't go around. writing something against particular community or you know uh, religion just because it has it's a maratha mughal war mm-hmm. yeah because uh, you know it's a book it is going to be read i will not have the time to or reveal with them or the knowledge to explain my point individually to each and every person reading the book right. whatever the book is going to be read and be interpreted what it is right. yeah so that bit of responsibility is there that you are not going to be there individually mm-hmm. to argue with every person who is reading it mm-hmm. तुम्हारा जो किताब है दैट इज योर इमेज एंड यू रीड इट वंस एंड यू यू सी दैट यू आर नॉट गोइंग टू बी एबल टू टॉक टू दिस पर्सन वो ही रिटर्न इट तो तुम्हारा इमेज क्या बनता है सो व्हाट इज द इमेज क्रिएटेड अबाउट दिस पर्सन व्हाट इज यू पॉइंट विद इन अ सिचुएशन वेयर यू आर नॉट हैविंग द एबिलिटी टू टॉक टू हिम एंड से व्हाई आई रेड दिस इन योर बुक आई एम नॉट श्योर दिस मींस यू विल नॉट बी देयर यू डोंट नो वेयर द ऑथर इज So this sort of responsibility is there that you, you are very uh, second about what your viewpoint is. You will make it clear what it is. Mm-hmm. And yes, there are controversial topics also. But I would uh, say that there is no need to get into to get the books in controversy. You are not supposed to get into. Mm-hmm. Okay, if it is uh, if the book has gotten into controversy, then mm-hmm. you can show it. Mm-hmm. If I write a book on Ram Mandir, mm-hmm. I am writing on the controversial topic, and it is going to have all the controversy on it. Mm-hmm. But don't put the book in a place where it's not supposed to be. So what happens is the focus of the book then goes. If, for example, there was a book in Marathi which came out a uh, few years back. Uh, it says uh, Lachit Barfukan Assam Assam Shivaji. Okay. Yeah, which basically means that uh, Lachit Barfukan the Shivaji of Assam. Hmm. And this book, whatever uh, discussion I've seen on the social media, hmm. it was all about whether this title is appropriate. Okay. Yes. So what has happened is. That he has put out a title, I don't know whatever he wants, mm-hmm. author. But the book was about celebrating Nazi Barfukan. Right. So ended up becoming a discussion, a controversy on the title. Right. 
and the comparison. Yeah. yeah. Now he may have very good reason, but he can't be there on every social media post. Right? Right. May not even know what's happening. Right. So there are uh, three, four posts that uh, threads were there on social media, and all that they were saying is that um, you know. It's totally incorrect. How can someone be compared to Shivaji? And these people are getting up and saying, how can we be compared to Shivaji? Mm-hmm. As you say, mm-hmm. so you should clear about what your book is about mm-hmm. and uh, not get into, get the book into an area you're not supposed to get into. Because then what happens is that uh, the book's impact is going to be lost. Right. Yeah. The people are going to keep discussing about a title when they're supposed to be talking about the mm-hmm. content. Right. Yeah. Or if somebody is going to dismiss the book on the basis of three or four pages. Right. Yeah, the SSA will come. The this guy is uh, according to Swan Soul biology. Forget him. Yeah. So you should take care that what you write, the message gets across, and then get blocked by, you know, few pages here and there. Right. Yeah. So um, I have also heard that you are working on some new project, and probably something new is coming up. So I would like to know more about your upcoming project, and uh, probably the kind of things how you foresee your time devotion to various blogs, articles, books, uh, whatever you are working on. Yeah, I currently write for uh, three publications. I write for DNA, mm-hmm. Indian history articles for uh, DNA. Mm-hmm. Column comes once or twice a month mm-hmm. as uh, alternate histories. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I also write for Swaraj Mag okay. and for uh, India Facts. Okay. Yeah. So these one is obviously offline newspaper are quite well known, and Swaraj Magazine and India Facts are also now getting a lot of uh, coverage, a lot of visibility. Mm-hmm. Especially as being kind of right of center, right. this kind of narrative. So I write um, Indian history related articles mm-hmm. for these publications. Apart from this, I have also written articles in Marathi uh, for one or two, you know, special issues mm-hmm. coming out of Pune. Um, so this is what my writing is, mm-hmm. apart from the books, mm-hmm. and I also run a blog huh. yeah, where you can see articles which I have. Written before, mm-hmm. and articles which I have not put into any of these uh, publications. Mm-hmm. Right. So the next topic will be about the Maratha War of Independence. Okay. Yeah. So it's about the war between the Mughals and the Marathas, for span about 27 years. I'll so be focusing more on the 17 years following Chitwati Kamaji's mm-hmm. death. Okay. So from 1690 to 17, there was some time period covered. Not much literature is then, especially in English, mm-hmm. on this topic. Uh, although the war affected directly affected about seven Indian provinces. Today's mm-hmm. Indian provinces: uh, Gujarat, Maharashtra, obviously, mm-hmm. Goa, Karnataka, mm-hmm. Tamil Nadu, Tamil Nadu big way in that. Very few people know that uh, Maratha capital was at was at Jinji, near Chennai, for good eight years. <laughs> I also didn't know that. <laughs> Yeah, so the Tamil Nadu is directly connected to this part of the state. Hmm. Andhra Pradesh is related to it. Hmm. There were Maratha raids in uh, Malwa, north of uh, Bhopal, hmm. the Shironj region. Then these activities of Marathas inspired others, such as Durgadas Rathod in Rajputana. So yeah. also, and, and he met, in fact, he came to the king, he met Chaturvedi Sambhaji, stayed here for six years, returned, and he was able to free Jodhpur. Okay. So, And main reason was the collapse administration that had happened because of this war. So I'm going to write on this topic. Okay. Let's see how much time it is. I don't know. Research and things. Okay. Two to three years. Yes. So, um, from a more logistical perspective, um, writing a book involves not just research and you getting the word done. It also involves getting a lot of feedback from people about what kind of narratives, what kind of language is there. Is it? Understandable. Is it creating the right imagination you wanted to create? Also to get the right publisher on board. Also to then publicize it across multiple places. How to get the right audience reach the book? So, what kind of effort is required in that direction? Uh, about getting the once the book is complete, once the uh, whole uh, writing part is done, what goes beyond that? What happens after that? Uh, there is some basic case of polishing, mm-hmm. reading. Um, my wife. Played a huge part in my second book, mm-hmm. as far as this part of the book is concerned. Mm-hmm. So Pranati helped a lot okay. regarding polishing the book, right. so, take away all the kinks. Mm-hmm. And, uh, I gave it to a few people to read. Essentially, the books are meant for the layman audience, mm-hmm. 
Mm-hmm. Yeah. So even to you know, the or people are not good historians or mm-hmm. not so much into history, but they like to read mm-hmm. and they want to read about a new narrative of Indian history. Right. So see, uh, people want to target. So I give it to a few people to read. Um, the person who written the foreword to the book, he is himself um, been an IS officer in Nagaland. Mm-hmm. He retired now, but mm-hmm. he was an IS officer in Nagaland for over 20 years. So his perspective was quite important because so he, he had been there and he had in fact uh, even been part of the government committee and the Bodo education production. So he had um, some knowledge of uh, Assam's history also, history and culture and as to how this, these personalities really affect the people there. So his perspective really mattered on this topic mm-hmm. and um, so once I had these viewpoints in place, I had to tell you pretty well. Uh, spend quite some time freezing out the errors because we typing errors and this flow and everything. So we both of us really sat together. Each and every paragraph and chapter at which we <laughs> going properly from one line to the next line. You don't have too many, you know, typing errors because it's not very important. I mean, in a sense, it doesn't really affect the book as such, typos. But when you have too many typos in then it becomes really boring, irritating to read. So you have to you know, pay attention to these things also. Mm-hmm. Yeah. We, the cover of the book has also been designed by me. Mm-hmm. Of, uh, the okay. So that is another aspect I pay attention to. Since the first book cover was something people really criticized. Okay. Because they didn't really like it. That again has been changed. A uh, friend of hers has designed the new cover. Brahmaputra's okay. uh, cover is that. So that helped. And uh, marketing, obviously, you've done a lot of marketing via social media. Connect with people who are in this field, hmm. and uh, yeah, so just put it out. Word of mouth is the best publicity. People are buying, and a lot of people from that uh, heard about this book also and so forth and whatever it is. Right. Yeah. So this kind of thing helps, and um, it's been pretty good. Uh, Brahmaputra already gone into the second uh, first uh, reprint. Okay. Yeah, and expecting the third to start pretty soon, yeah, hopefully by the end of this year. Okay. <laughs> okay. So yes, so that will be the questions from my side. I would love uh, you to speak to the people who really want to become an author and uh, you are probably some interesting insights from your journey of becoming one and some interesting insights or anecdotes to share about what could be the possible times where they might feel uh, leaving the book in the middle or uh, just getting away with the project and how did you what did you learn from it and how probably they can take some lessons out of it? Yeah. Uh, well, if you are interested, if that's a passion and that's a hobby, by all means, go ahead and do it. Uh, as far as making it a career choice is concerned, that's a different story because then you have to think about uh, various other things. Are you going to be able to pay your bill and all this according to your uh, earnings as an author? But certainly, as a hobby or uh, if you're passionate about it, by all means, find time to do it. Hmm. Yeah, if you're passionate about it, I'm pretty sure you will find time. Because my job is not so much. My work is not so much. When I agree, it is hectic, it is difficult. Hmm. But we have to put an effort to put the the fruit of it. Because once you see the book in your hand and you uh, receive feedback from it, it's a very nice feeling, a great feeling. Hmm. Yeah. If you are, uh, people are coming to you asking for autograph and all this. <laughs> so it, uh, I got my first autograph very uh, totally over the moon. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, so we have passion about it, do find time for it. And um, don't necessarily have to write a book. You can start with something small blogs, articles. Yeah. Blogs are free for everyone. You can uh, write for free. Yeah. You don't have to really depend on someone to be able to write. And uh, the whole idea is that uh, the writing should keep you happy. Hmm. If you have written a good article, uh, if you have written a good article, it means that you should be happy about it. I mean, that's the article you So it's essentially about um, putting out as much writing as possible on your own. Uh, books are concerned, like I mentioned earlier, also all the point to be considered writing the book. Hmm. I said, point to a different story. Article like I can finish writing in one day, two days next. Right. Yeah. Book is going to take years. Yeah. About 200, 300 pages. So you have to keep yourself 
motivated throughout the time. Because right. the different ways of going about it. Hmm. Some people like to put in a very disciplined uh, way to writing. Hmm. They'll say, I'll get up at 4 in the morning, then I um, write for 2 hours, and then I'll freshen up, and then I go to the office or whatever. I'll tell the rest of the work. Hmm. Yeah. And then keep at it. Maybe not same time. But every day I devote one hour to writing. Okay. Yeah. My approach is different. Mm-hmm. I tend to write continuously for about five, six hours, okay. eight hours. Then I don't do anything for the next ten days. <laughs> then again I write. Then I write for six hours one day. Next day again I write for six hours. And then nothing happens when I am very haphazard in my writing. And um, so it depends on you how you're going to approach it. Right. Uh, only thing you should have the end goal in mind is that this book is going to come out. Right. Yeah. And challenge as well, one is trying to having sufficient amount of time. Hmm. You have to devote time to it, to hmm. find time for it. And once you have actually the synopsis and the whole uh, book in mind that this is going to happen, I'm going to hmm. focus on all these topics. You don't get into a situation of a writer's block or something. Uh, I also don't have a linear approach to what I write. Okay. I can write second chapter first, then the seventh chapter, then the first chapter, then the fifteenth <laughs> chapter. मुझे जो लगता है कि भाई अच्छा बन जाए आज अच्छा लिखूँगा मैं इसके बारे में. If I feel like today I'm going to write really nicely about Chaturvedi Shivaji, I'm going to write about Chaturvedi Shivaji. Okay. Even though my next chapter is about somebody else. Okay. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So that is my approach. Some people take a very really linear approach. Mm-hmm. Yeah, then chapter one means I must go to chapter two. Okay. Take whatever suits you. Mm-hmm. Don't do it because I said it. Right. Um, my job approach, say like that. Whatever approach is suiting you, right. you take it. But the whole thing is actually be able to complete the book. Right. And end of it. And that's the goal. That's the goal. Right. The book should come out. Okay. Actually, in case as a publishers, difficult to get. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Big publisher. I also had no idea about publishing mm-hmm. when I started off. My job like I think we need to go there. I'm saying I will go. Um, big publishers have waiting list of about two to three years. Okay. Yeah. Uh, two years later, they're going to consider your work. <laughs> okay. Uh, one friend of mine, he got published through a reputed publishing house. Mm-hmm. From the point of time, he said that my work is ready for five years for the book to come in the market. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So it's a slow process. Are you prepared for that? Okay, right? Because your book is yours. Your yeah. marketing a lot of it will be done by you. Right. <coughs> and um, so, see, you can tap into the publishing market. There are many smaller publishers. Mm-hmm. There is also self-publishing nowadays. Right. Where you know you are doing the publishing and you are doing the marketing. Right. And you are also making all the money. Right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes. There is a there is incentive is there. Mm-hmm. So that's the You know, next part of it. Right. Finish writing. So once you finish writing the book, today or tomorrow, you are going to be able to be bring it out in the market, mm-hmm. either on your own, mm-hmm. your own money, mm-hmm. or to a small publisher or larger publisher. Mm-hmm. But the whole idea is that the book should be done first place. Right. Yeah. And like I said, the dividends are many. There are um, you know, might be what is the advantages. I have met a lot of people mm-hmm. through my books. Uh, most importantly, I met my wife. <laughs> so if I had not written Sahaj Rishindu Kush or written those articles and blogs, I wouldn't have met Pranati or got married today. So that is so you know. So for me, that is well done. I mean, hmm. other people not find their wives through books. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good incentive to have. That's a good incentive to have. I don't mind of find a wife through books, but. Uh, You do uh, come across and meet a lot of uh, people mm-hmm. who I met a lot of people, a lot of acquaintances like you, for example, right, right. <laughs> <laughs> through my writing, mm-hmm. uh, which would have been really impossible right. if I had not been uh, writing stuff, right, right. because it becomes a uh, identity yes, for you. Yes. Yeah. You know, writing becomes that like, this is me, right, right. and the knowledge and approach to problems and approach to topics. Right. Yeah. Professional field, fine. You're going to have a lot of people who are connected to professionally. Mm-hmm. But that is always going to be a field that is within the four walls of your office. Right. Yeah, right. people are going to be able to talk to you only about your profession right. and about nothing else. Right. 
and is going to have a very professional approach to uh, that is going to stay within the office and everybody has that sort of but this hobby is passion really connected people who I would have not met otherwise hmm. yeah. important people people who shared interests hmm. uh, who really helped me a lot in you know taking this talent or taking this hobby hmm. to more places it really motivated me to write more speak hmm. more hmm. and uh, it enabled uh, my hobby and passion to really blossom and flower hmm. yeah. so this part of my life I'm really happy right. uh, yes. I, I stand out and it's hmm. mainly because of the writing right. yeah. so let me really say that uh, it has its benefits or incentives so, okay. so yes uh, Thanks a lot, Anish, uh, for Thank this you. wonderful session. I suppose this Thank will be really helpful, especially to the budding writers, and also to people who want to work in the domain of very uh, re-mainstreaming the Indian history and the part which is supposedly lost in the way textbooks and the way we read yeah. our history. So, uh, in fact, in the newspaper columns or uh, this DNA or the histories, I focused especially on small small articles on mm -hmm. topics which are not really relevant. Mm -hmm. uh, in the sense, not really uh, spoken about right. in uh, normal textbooks. Right. So, I take up this topic, and I have covered a wide variety of topics through it. Mm -hmm. yeah. Books are basically about one particular topic, mm -hmm. but through these columns, I cover a lot more topics, mm -hmm. which are more wide ranging. Right. And uh, so, within thousand words, you can really get an idea of, of an event or a topic which is not known. Like for example, I have written about uh, the Gujar Pratya, about uh, Bappa Rawal. Okay. Yeah. So about the 8th century there have been an invasion mm -hmm. all along the border of today, Rajasthan and Sindh. Right. And there was actually a huge alliance of kings, Indian kings right from Kashmir to oh, Karnatak. Okay. Kept away these invaders, okay. Arab invaders in 736, 738 AD. Right. So this kind of uh, topic. So it is short, thousand words. Mm -hmm. So, by these uh, topics and by these articles, I really see that an alternate view of uh, history coming out. That people know, apart from this, that there is a parallel history also, which is unknown. Right. Yeah. So, Anish's uh, blog link and Anish's book links will be available in the comment section of this live video. So, you can just have a look at the books, have a look at the blogs, have a look at the various articles he has written. And you can also have a look. I personally would recommend you to read both of his books. Uh, I have personally read them and I feel they are really relevant. Also to understand what kind of strategies we followed or what kind of personalities we have had and what possibly we could learn to, in our contemporary world from their learnings and from their uh, experiences. So yes, that would be it. Uh, thanks a lot. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Thanks a lot.